Oh yeah, folks, what's up? I am so excited for today's stream. I think it's gonna be so much fun. Welcome in. It is good to see all of you folks again. Again, what's going on? My name is Voodoo Val, and uh, I'm here for another episode of Graphic Glow Up. Um, and I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. So as you can see, today is Operation Gradients Galore. Um, and I think it's gonna be fun. We're gonna be messing with color. We're gonna be messing with gradients, gradient maps, a lot of textures and stuff. And I don't know if all of you folks were here for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge this morning, but we were doing a similar thing earlier today. And um, I'm really excited for today, not just because we're messing with color and all that good stuff, but also because we kind of get to do a continuation of what we were doing um, with the daily creative challenge this morning. So any of you folks who followed along with me, if you're still working on your projects, pull them up. I'm gonna be working on um, a variation of the project I did this morning from the start so that those of you who want to, you can join in. It's gonna be a little more um, detailed than this morning and we're gonna do a few of them. We're gonna do more than one. So we're gonna be experimenting with different colors, different techniques and all that good stuff and it should be super cool. Yes, very purple. What's up, Emma? I saw you in chat saying that um, you really appreciate my lessons and have learned a lot from them. I'm so happy to hear that you are enjoying them, that you are learning, um, and I hope that you will join in with me uh, for today. Um, let me see. Uh, is purple not the sky blue pink my nanny used to talk about? Purple, I feel like, can be a sky color. It's like a sky bluish pink. I, I think, yeah, it's like a mixture of the two. It can be in the sky. I'm sure I've seen many sunsets um, that include all of these colors um, on the screen. I'm sure. Um, Arthava, uh, Arth yeah, Arthava, Atharva. That is a very unique name. I'm excited um, that you are here with us today. Do you get a task? You do get a task. Your task is to experiment with colors today. So um, I'm gonna pop over here to um, my screen after I kind of give you a rundown of what Graphic Glow Up is. If you've never been here before, this is kind of an exploration of a lot of um, Adobe's, uh, like kind of free resource sites. So we're gonna be diving into Adobe Stock today. We're gonna be diving into um, Adobe Color as well because we're going to be snagging some um, different color palettes and photos and all of that. Um, so I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty pumped for it. Um, and we are also going to have kind of an award ceremony afterwards because Graphic Glow Up is also always kind of a pat on the back for us as designers to appreciate the work that we do and the progress that we make um, without feeling like we have to finish something that's ready to put in our portfolio in order to get that feeling of achievement. Um, and, and progress and stuff like that. So um, I'm pumped, but let's dive into it. So this is something that I created earlier this morning. Um, again, as I said, if you joined in with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, I walked you through this sort of project, but we're gonna kind of get a little more crazy with it, which I'm pumped about. So what I'm gonna do, um, this is my challenge file, um, which again, if you go ahead to the, um, daily creative challenge uh, page or jump into the replays which are here or over on YouTube you can find um, the starter file for this um, if you like I'm gonna go ahead and group all this and hide it however because we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna get brand new here okay um, so I am going to I've got a couple of images in my libraries which I am going to use because I've kind of gathered some cool uh, images these two little portraits here um, but what I really would like to do is head over to Adobe color um, and snag some new colors because we made gradient maps today and I want to walk you through some pretty cool gradient stuff dive a little deeper into gradient maps um, and the epic magic of that um, and see what we can cook up. So this is the um, front page of the Explore section of Adobe Color. And I have been looking at this on my front page for so long, this one image that I just think is so cool. I feel like it can make a really great um, gradient map. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my library. It is throwing it into my Photoshop DCC for May and June. Um, that's fine with me, but if you would like to change that, all you have to do is set it to a different uh, library for you 
um, if you don't like the default library it throws things in. This is a good one too, because this has like a really nice uh, kind of variation, like from dark to light. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that one. Uh, I really like this as well, because it's got these nice yellows, oranges, and reds, and this kind of cool green color. So I'm going to throw that in there. Um, and I mean, I guess we don't have to add too many. I'm kind of on the same, oh, this is cool. Kind of a nice pink color. I'm kind of doing like a, I guess I, I call them creepy colors and like sunset colors. So I'm doing a lot of oranges and stuff. And then I'm also doing a lot of like sour greens and purples. That's just what I like to do. You can choose different colors. Um, George, welcome in. Watching from South Africa. Awesome. Keep up the good work. You're such an inspiration to many of us. The world needs more people like you. That's very kind, George. I try my best. I'm so excited to uh, know that you are really enjoying these streams. So thank you for being here. And yes, Wade Acuff in the chat with the trophies and um, medals. Exactly. How's everything going, Voodoo? I am, I'm doing great. And I hope that you are too. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sky blue pink was in the seventies, a phrase that was a little nonsensical, like sky hooks. Oh, okay, cool. I get it. Um, uh, epic magic. Indeed. Um, I don't think I need too many more color palettes. I might choose like one more, but I don't want to dwell too much on this part of the stream. Maybe if I see something else that cuts, catches my eye, um, by the time I get down here, I'll snag it. But if not, no, nah, I don't think I need another one. I think I've got some good colors. So, um, I will go ahead and throw this over here, uh, on my other monitor. Um, and I'm going to snag this, uh, this picture right here. I think this is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to double click this image. I've snagged this from Adobe stock. Um, and if I double click it, it will just open it up, um, in my Photoshop. Um, and I can select this character from my background here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead. There's a lot of ways that you can select, uh, photos out of a canvas. Um, the quick selection is really great. If you just, um, select the object selection tool and just kind of tap, on the subject that you want, it will go ahead and automatically select it for you, which actually in this case works pretty darn well. There are some cleanup areas that will need to happen around the edge, but I actually think this is fine. I think I can clean this up manually. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and just hit my mask button and mask that out. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is, I think I'll make a new layer or a new file. I think I'll just go, file new. Um, and I think I will do like this size. I think that'll work and make sure my orientation is like in portrait and I will go ahead and do that. Um, so I'll come back over here. This is a very long title. This is a super, super long title. Um, I'm going to convert this to a smart object just so it's just her. Uh, and I will actually drag and drop this into my library. Because normally what I do is I snag the layer and then I drag it and I hover over the other Photoshop file that I would like to drop it into. But this title is so long, I can't really do that. But now because I have that in my library, um, what I will do is I'll go ahead and um, close this if I can. This is crazy. This is such a large, maybe if I go to one of these. Um, yeah, here we go. Maybe, maybe not. Untitled. There we go. Um, I'll go ahead and close that and I'll say no, I don't need to save it because I have a smart object in my libraries and now I can come to my library and I can drag and drop this right in here um, and we'll clean it up. We'll clean this up. Um, so let me I want to make sure I'm not on my object selection tool uh, anymore. Okay. Um, so I can clean this up. I'll just go ahead and drop her right there. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can clean this up. You can come in um, and actually mask it out. So if I hit my mask button, which I don't actually think you can see for some reason, I'm not sure. Let me, I'm gonna make my Photoshop much smaller. Um, just so that you guys can really 
you guys are gonna see all my video games <laughs> on my screen. Um, but if I can, hello, there we go. Um, and you still can't see that. Let me see if I can, apologies. Let me see if I can bump this up. There you go, okay, cool. So now you can see this is, it's this little masking button right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead uh, and hit that mask. Um, and what that will allow me to do is if I take my stylus, I like to use a stylus because I like to paint and draw, uh, make sure I'm selected on my mask layer and then I can come in and paint with black and I can just paint that right out around the edges. You can use a lasso, like the, your, your lasso tool and you could make a selection around the hair and paint bucket in um, black as long as you can put black on the canvas where you would like to subtract from her, it's almost like erasing. Um, and then if you want to bring it back, like if I make a wrong stroke and I wanna bring that back, all I have to do is paint with white and it'll come right back. Um, for those of you who are less familiar with um, masking. So let's go ahead and clean these edges up. I just don't want it to be like, you know, really um, jagged, you know, like how the, some of these edges are a little gritty. I don't really want that. I want it to be smooth. And her hairstyle, I feel like, lends itself to smoothness. And if you can't see, like if it's not smooth on the edge, then I think it's just gonna look strange. So I'm just cleaning this up. Um, and we're gonna kind of use our colors that we have just found and we're gonna create a nice gradient map. Um, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna paint. Val used uh, to love noisy textures. What happened? I do still love noisy textures. In fact, um, we are going to get into the noisy brush. Have you seen me use the noisy brush, um, Emma? Have you been in the chat when I do that? Um, because I have a new favorite thing. I used to like drag and drop, you're right. I used to like drag and drop noise textures into uh, my files when I paint and I, I, and I still do. I have like a whole, um, I go to True Grit Texture Company, I believe. Let me see if that's right. True Grit Texture Co. Texture Supply, True Grit Texture Supply. So this is a really great resource for any of you who really like um, uh, texture, noise, and stuff. Um, so True Grit Texture Supply is one of my favorite places. I used to, I, I do create my own noise textures and things a lot of the time, but um, this is an excellent, excellent resource. So um, if you scroll down through here, you can see all of these pieces that are made with the texture. And a lot of these are um, like brushes and things that simulate certain um, textures as you shade. Like for example, hold on, let me, I'm actually gonna grab you the other thing because the best place that I've ever been to when it comes to looking at True Grit Texture Supply um, is their Instagram. Um, and the Instagram really, really shows um, I think how cool it is. Let me see if I can find one of these. That's really good. And I'm not, I'm not showing myself like looking through it only because, um, I, I just want to make sure there's no like cussing or nudity or anything like that, which there can be sometimes, um, on this Instagram. So I think this is a yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is a really great one. Um, so they have the pastels. My windows are so weird today. They have like this one where you can see um, all of these ways to fill with their pencil brushes. So you can see it has like cross hatching um, and check that out. Like these cool texture fill um, brushes that almost make it look like stylized sketching, which is really, really neat. And then they also have what I like to get, are like these big texture packs that are just TIFF files that are like super high quality, very detailed, um, just canvases of noise texture and things. And I use that in my artwork all the time. So check out True Grit Texture Supply. Um, it is a great resource. I think you folks will love it. If you like noise and texture, 
super, super cool. I use it all the time. Um, and it's great. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of my favorite place. I like to make noise textures and every once in a while I make one where I'm just like, Man, look at you, Val, out here being a professional, making high quality textures. That is excellent. That is great and awesome. Um, but but a lot of the times I just go there because their their textures are like perfect. Um, I think I'm gonna embellish here and I'm going to take away this chunk of her hair um, and go ahead and kind of blend that out. And it doesn't have to be crazy because the thing is I'm gonna be using a lot of dark colors today, so it doesn't matter. Um, if it's like super clean, it just needs to be smooth. That's all I want is for it to be smooth. So I've done this. Um, and now what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd like to kind of get a gradient map going. Um, so I'm going to look at the colors that we just chose. Um, I kind of want to do this one. I kind of really like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush, make a new layer just with control shift in or control or command shift in if you are on a Mac. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these and just make myself a color palette or, or, so that I can, um, with this layer selected, uh, I can create my own gradient map. So um, when it comes to gradient maps, I have some other things that I can say for you. Um, if you were here for our daily creative challenge earlier this morning, which would have been uh, the challenge for gradient maps um, in the blue and pink colors, um, I did go over the settings, but I feel like I have more time and I can go more in depth uh, today. So if you have ever gone to like image something and so if this happens to you all you have to do is remember that you're sampling colors from the layer you are on which is why I made my own little color palette on a layer so that I can sample from my actual my actual layer so um, if I go to uh, I don't want to preview this I want to be able to edit it um, so I should be able yeah so I should be able to just select that blue I like it um, I'm gonna edit this white and I think I don't think I'm going to use all of these. I think I'm going to sample this bright orange. Um, and then in between all these spaces, I'm going to go ahead and sample like this bright red. Um, and then I might sample a different blue. Something like that, maybe. I kind of want it to be darker because I do want, I do want a lot of vibrance, but I also want it to be, um, kind of a nice fade from color to color. Uh, so let's see about making this not as saturated. Um, and then I wonder if we could put something in the middle here. I wonder if like a strange purple would look interesting there like a bluish purple eh, I don't think so I don't think that's gonna work so I'm just gonna drag this down and out um, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this um, GGU gradients and I will hit new to save it and it applies it here in my little presets here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Okay, um, I will hide that and then I will come over here to my gal um, and I'm gonna apply a gradient map to her. So let's go ahead to image adjustments um, and gradient map. And then I'm gonna scroll down and choose. Ooh. <laughs> I like this so much. Okay, let's edit it. So I'm just gonna kind of swirl some things around. I'm gonna bump this up and I'm going to make a darker color here because I feel like it needs to be darker so I can, yeah, so I can really drag out those um, details. Um, and notice, so it, it, it very clearly, when you're applying these gradient maps, keep in mind, you can mix and match the different values of color as you go along. But notice that even though I changed from you know, dark blue to bright red, I still have a fade where it goes from being the darkest value of colors 
on over to the lightest value of colors. And that is because if you can think of it this way, the gradient map is applying the colors that are on one side of the gradient map spectrum to the darkest values in your image. And then the opposite end of the gradient map spectrum is going to be applied to the brightest or lightest values of your, uh, your image spectrum. So if I do that, um, and I keep that in mind, that means that this, this photo with this map applied to it, if all of my colors are fading from darkest to lightest, no matter what colors they are, it's still gonna apply them one after the other from the darkest points and then kind of, I guess, like emerge into the next color, which is what I'm going for here. So I really like this. I think we could even, I don't want that to be too bright, but I could change that. Let's see, that's kind of cool. I don't want it to be too crazy, but I wonder if I could bring this and then put an even brighter color at the end. It might look crazy, it could look crazy, but we could do it. I kind of like it because it adds more detail onto the top of the bangs there. Let's go ahead and bring that in. I kind of like it with just like the tidbits of color around. I do, I do. I feel like it could use a little more, oops. I feel like it could use a little bit more love, but it's cool, it's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this one too, cause I just edited that gradient map that I made. So I'm gonna call this um, GGU gradient two. Um, and I'm gonna save it. No, did I save it? Yes, okay. Um, and I'll hit okay. You can also reverse it if you want, um, which depending on what you're trying to do, that could be cool, but I like it um, fading from dark to light. Um, hot, 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 yes, Matrix vibe for sure. That feeling when you find the right gradient map, it does, when it first starts to work, it's so fun. I urge you to join in with me and do this project if only because playing with the gradient maps is awesome. Um, Doctor Who, welcome in. It's good to see you. I love that you are... <laughs> there is a person in this chat whose name is Doctor Who and their... <laughs> their user icon is the Dreamweaver logo turned phone box blue. <laughs> you are a genius, whoever you are, Doctor. <laughs> Hats off to you, I love it. You are, you're a hero. Um, I love it. <laughs> save your work. Oh my God, it does say, it does say Untitled One. I'm so sorry. Um, I am gonna switch over to face cam real quick just because when I hit save, it might um, show some files that are secret. Let me just save this real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna call this Saved. Okay, it's saved. Let me pop back over. I've got secret files on this computer that you're not allowed to see yet till like next month. Um, Annika's heart breaks for no saves. This is very true. <laughs> you're welcome, Doctor Who. It's, it's good to have you with us. Um, okay, so I've got this. I want to make like a cool background now. So we've done um, colors with gradients, but I also want to um, do some interesting background shape. So earlier today, I put like a circle um, around in like a halo, which I might do something similar to that now, but I kind of want to do something different. I kind of want to do like maybe a circle, but maybe we do more of them. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and I'll throw a circle back here. I will. Uh, I'll hit V on my keyboard to access my move tool and I'll put I'll put like a cool halo planet moon thing back there but I kind of want now that we have more time I kind of want to be able to um, kind of experiment more with things that we could do so what else could we plan here I feel like we could do some kind of um, like if I grab her and I put her higher, and then we use some shapes to 
overlap and underlap with parts of the image. So like, what if we did something like this? What if we grab our pen tool um, and do go to the curvature pen tool? And what if I start tapping around just to make a nice curve? Um, and what if I come back around um, and make like a weird tube thing? There's a weird tube um, and maybe this underlaps and overlaps with her hair in a way. So if I move this, maybe I would have to like flip it horizontal. Um, and I can make that a different color than everything else if I kind of turn this. And we can have this go over her um, and maybe under her hair. I don't know, I'm just experimenting here. So I could mask this. Um, and then on this mask, I can take my brush and I can kind of come in here and maybe I do something like this and just mask out that piece. I'll just scribble that right out of there. And we can do a bunch of stuff like that. And it's still kind of um, meh, but um, we can change this color. So let's come back over here. Let's get back into our fill and let's do like an orange. So there's like a, a weird orange something and let's do like a bunch more. Like maybe we put one behind her now. Um, so maybe we'll do like a similar thing. And I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm using the curvature pen tool. I just kind of clicked in a weird uh, snake pattern and now I'm just lining up these points with the ones I've already placed. So I'm just kind of following my path back around, which is actually kind of relaxing and calm. So I've got that. And then this one will change um, to like a, another bright color and it's back behind her. And maybe we can transform this um, and maybe rotate it. I don't want it to be like a perfect copy of like the shape we already created. So maybe we put it like that. Um, and I think we could also grab some more ellipses and let's put one like over top. Hold shift to kind of keep it nice. Um, and let's float, let's float some serious uh, shapes around here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then, huh, let's change this to like a darker color just so that we can see it. Um, and I wonder if we could also do like a, a majorly large wiggle instead of just a tube. So maybe we go like this. Let me grab my pen tool and just hit P on my keyboard. I don't think that's wiggly enough. We need more wiggles, okay? No subpar wiggles, okay? That does still look kind of meh, but I'm going to alter them to be a little smoother, which is really, really nice with the Curvature Pen Tool. Um, the Curvature Pen Tool is my new best friend. I can't tell you how many times I've tried and retried to make perfectly curved blobs with the regular pen tool. If you're trying to make very smooth curves and blobs and things with the regular pen tool, do yourself a favor and experiment with the Curvature Pen Tool. Do it. It is so nice. It is so nice. I wish I could see Val's secret files. I love your art, Val. You will see a massive amount of secret files um, in maybe a month or so. Um, I just, like, it kind of sucks. I don't know how to explain it. When you, when you get to work on cool things, but you can't tell any of your friends that you're working on them, you can't, you can't say anything. Um, and you just kind of have to be like, I don't know, what have I? What have I been up to? Not sure. Mm. 
Um, I can't say anything to any of you guys, but um, maybe soon I will be able to show you some cool stuff that I did. Um, I did do one project recently. I don't know if anybody saw this. I've been, I feel really weird bragging about this, but I think I'm just, I think I'm just gonna brag about it. So, um, there's been several times, especially all through Star Wars week, um, the sci-fi week that we did, where I just really wanted to, I really wanted to say something, but I could not. Um, but by the time we did Star Wars week and people in the chat were like, wouldn't it be so cool if you did like an official Star Wars something, something? I did. And I was waiting for it to be announced. So I got to officially do artwork for Lucasfilm, which has been released. Um, so if you guys want to check it out, it's on my Twitter. Um, and what I got to do was there's a new book coming out called Shadow of the Sith. Um, and the limited edition version that will be sold at Barnes and Nobles will come with a limited edition poster print and that poster print is painted by yours truly. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud of it. I will say, I think that this is like a cool, like, you know, I'm, I'm bragging about it. Why when I free transform, there we go. I'm bragging about it because I am proud of myself. But I want you guys to know something about this gig that I did. Um, it's seriously and honestly like a, a freaking gr dream come true. Like, no lie. Um, but I want you guys to, I want to tell you guys about what it was like going through the process of all this so that you can understand about it, I guess. I think that when I when I first started doing art, I, I assumed that everybody ever who was ever working on super cool projects that I wished that I could do, which I would say this project that I've gotten to do for Lucasfilm is probably the coolest thing I've ever been able to do because, you know, I love Star Wars. I assumed that anybody who'd ever done Star Wars art officially um, was just like, thebomb.com, no care in, a, in the world, like going through their lives shining um, with no worries. I was terrified throughout this whole thing um, because I wanted to do such a good job because I love Star Wars, I know Star Wars, it's, it's my thing, but I was terrified the whole time wondering if it was gonna be good enough. And then um, all of that kind of went away for a little bit because I, um, there was a lot of time between finishing the project and it being released to the public. Um, and when it was gonna get released to the public, I have to, I'm telling you this, this is my honest truth. Um, when it was going to be released to the public, real quick, um, I am going to lower the spacing. If you guys have ever painted with a, a, like a hard round brush and you see these little ridges in the brush, if you wanna get rid of those, just bump the spacing totally down. Um, and I'm just gonna mask out this portion here. Uh, when I was working on the project, I was scared. Um, and then there was so much distance and time in between finishing the job and it being released to the public that the morning I got the message saying, hey, it's out. So you can say stuff to people about it. I panicked and I called. <laughs> I called my mom and I called my boyfriend and I was like, what if they hate it? <laughs> what, what if everyone hates it? So I just want you to know that like I got to do Star Wars art and I was terrified. So if you go through your life thinking that if you don't um, do, if you don't, you don't feel super confident going through your career doing jobs and feeling like you got this, you know, and everything's gonna be fine and you're great and brilliant. If you go through your life not feeling that way and you think that that means that you're not cut out for this or that you're not professional or that you shouldn't be doing what you're trying to do, throw that aside. It's easier said than done, but don't listen. Don't listen to that because um, it happens to everyone. It happens to so many people. Um, and I really, I think I really thought, even even at that moment, I think I really thought that like, well, 
As soon as I get to do real Star Wars art and not just weird paintings for my fan fictions, I'll have made it. I'll, <laughs> I'll have made it. I'll be fine. I won't have a care in the world. Um, nothing will upset me. I will be like this meditating digital art goddess and nothing will, you know, penetrate the calm of my professional facade. Not true. Not true. Um, everybody that you know, that you are a fan, a fan of, that you are aware of in the art world, they still have moments like that, no matter how cool, uh, they, the coolest stuff they get to work on. So please keep that in mind. Um, because I've been saying that for a long time, trying to encourage all of you folks not to feel terrified, um, going into your art journeys and doing things. Um, but I still have to practice what I preach, um, sometimes. And that was a big, that was a big one for me, for sure. Um, I, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> Just that your working says um, quite a lot. Well, um, I haven't. I feel like I talk about this a little bit, um, but one of the things that I like to say to people is like not to get discouraged when you're just doing things on your own during doing personal projects and stuff like that. Don't let that make you feel like you're not going anywhere because you never know who's gonna see it. Um, maybe I can talk a little bit about how I arrived at this point in my professional career if you think it would help. Um, real quickly though, I do want to stop and pause here. This is kind of shaping up to be like a strange little thing. I don't know exactly what's going on here, um, but I like it. It's got some weird shapes. I might add some more of these wigglies. I might just duplicate some of these wigglies and throw them in the background, I think is probably what I will do. Just put them all the way in the back here and I'll hide it and I'll duplicate this one. Um, and put it in the back. And what I might do is free transform and flip it horizontally and make it much bigger. Um, and just kind of change the color of that. Just like change these colors into something crazy, crazy. Um, just something to differentiate from everything else. Cause I'm gonna paint this stuff in and do some crazy stuff. Um, maybe I'll just, duplicate this one as well and rotate it this way and just go ahead and throw that right there. I just want to put some variation and I want to make sure that I'm not talking more than I'm explaining what exactly I'm doing here. Okay, so um, I am pretty sure um, I actually was able to get noticed for the uh, Star Wars project because I have been doing so much fan art. Um, and I did the, the project uh, with the Mandalorian helmets and somebody saw it. Um, and I assumed, I was like, if I'm gonna be considered for this, somebody clearly had to suggest to a friend, this looks like spaghetti. Oh no, I made spaghetti. I'm sorry. Don't you hate it when you sit down to make a work of art and teach a class on Adobe and you accidentally just make spaghetti? It happens to me all the time. <laughs> I sit down and just make spaghetti. Okay, um, anyways, um, I assumed that if I was gonna get a cool job like that, it would have to be because somebody suggested me, but they actually found um, my art online because I had been doing fan art. Um, and I had no idea that somebody would find me or, you know, reach out to me based on just me being a nerd and painting what I love, but that's what happened. I'm gonna go ahead and snag this darkest color here and drop this into the background. Um, it's really shaping up to look like a whole piece, but we do have to paint it up now um, and add some, some cool colors and things, some cool illustration stuff. Um, it's worms and eyes. <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs oh no but oh yes yeah um so i you know you never know where where things are gonna take you um but when i came to be able to um kind of hang out on adobe and do cool adobe live stuff um i was i was streaming on twitch um and you folks have probably heard me say before that like a really great way to kind of grow your business or your 
online presence as an artist is live streaming. Um, and I really do think that's true because I was streaming on Twitch kind of doing my own thing. Um, I was streaming Photoshop, I was showing people how I like to paint and stuff, and then somebody reached out to me one day um, asking if I would be interested in doing that sort of thing here. So if you really love to, to do something, um, I think you should go for it because I gotta tell you, I think if you love to do that thing, it's not even wishful or hopeful thinking. At least like a thousand other people on this planet also love that thing. Like there's just no way that at least that many people aren't super into what you're doing because they like to do it too or they want to learn how to do it. So if you can make some time to um, kind of do that, uh, do what you love, you will attract people who like to, you know, watch what you're doing. You'll find people who are interested in what you're doing. Um, and I think that that will take you to where you need to be instead of only worrying about like, what you think you need to be doing. I still did take jobs in between all of the things that I've been able to be involved in. Real quick, uh, one thing that I am gonna do right here is I'm gonna select all of these layers, all these shape layers here, um, and I'm going to rasterize those layers, and then I'm going to lock the transparency because we're getting ready to add some noise textures. Emma, I believe, was talking about noise textures earlier, and here they come. So I'll select these ones up top, um, and I will go ahead and right click, rasterize them to pixel layers and lock transparency because I'm gonna snag my handy dandy uh, noise brush. Just a nice soft pressure and opacity there. Grab, uh, set it to dissolve and I will um, make my brush super large and I'm gonna start painting in some cool texture here with my colors. Let me go ahead and grab my library of colors. Okay, um, but yeah, I think I think that if you, if you really wanna do something um, that you should put it out there. And as I said, as I was saying, I still did take like a lot of side jobs. I took a lot of jobs building my career that I really did not wanna do at all. Um, I think, I know that there's gonna be some people that are like, hey, but I hate designing websites. I love watching people design in Adobe XD. I really do. Um, I love how talented and amazing people are with it. Um, but I do not like doing it. I hate designing websites myself. Um, but I took a lot of website jobs because I had to, you know, because I wanted to do art full time and you got to pay the bills, you know, so I did a lot of stuff that I didn't want to do. But some of the greatest jobs, actually, I think maybe all of the greatest gigs and opportunities that have ever come my way have come because I found some time to do the art I was most passionate about. That's how I found my way into those situations. So, um, their heads. no, no, they're not, they're not, it's not spaghetti and meatballs. It's, it's dynamic design. I have to commit to this now because I've spent almost all stream doing this. Um, so just a kind of explanation of what I'm doing here. I'm just taking various colors from my color palette, uh, and I am kind of sprinkling some cool, uh, colors and things onto this uh, and I'm just if I hit V on my keyboard so I've got a lot of stuff going on here is a quick tip when you have a bunch of um, crazy stuff going on like this in a project you can kind of you can hit V on your keyboard to snag your move tool and you can just click so I want to go to this one I don't want to search for it in here I haven't done a very good job of naming my layer so I'll just click here hit B again um, and I'm actually gonna make let's make this sphere like a dark blue um, I want to make this one a different color so I can just paint this in, do my thing the way that I want to do it. Um, and then when I want to move to the next thing that I'm doing, um, I can just hit V on my keyboard. Let's go to this weird shape. Um, and I will hit B and notice I'm painting directly onto these layers. I'm really not, um, painting out of the lines and, uh, that is because I do have my transparency locked. Um, that is, I think, the best thing that you can do when it comes to doing something like this. I, I guess you could do all this transparency painting and um, 
use smart objects and clipping masks like you know put it on the layer do a clipping mask and then convert that into a smart object so you're working non-destructively um i really like this i think this is like super super almost meditative in a way that i can do this um, and just paint directly on the layers everything's very organized it's my personal preference um and you don't have to do it that way you can use clipping masks or paint directly on the layer if you want or just paint some texture and mask out that shape whatever is right for you um, but this is like my favorite workflow especially with this brush especially especially with this brush um, let's go ahead and add a blue one back here i think we need some blue um, and I'm going to go ahead and darken that a little bit right there, but I want to grab a much brighter blue, throw some blue right there. Um, and then we are going to, like, you can also just hold control, um, and it'll select. We're going to do the same thing here. How much time do we have? I want to make sure I'm not, we are cutting it sort of close. I think we've got about 13 minutes, um, left. Ah, no, we've got about 10 minutes left, so... Uh, this is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. Let's grab like a red. Let's bring that red through there. I like. Um, we'll grab this. So I'm just kind of like painting some cool, weird values here. Let's grab our bright orange and I'll put some more bright orange on certain pieces just to kind of give it some, some oomph. Uh, in certain places where it didn't have it before. Maybe a little bit, only a little bit right here. Um, I like it. Hold control for my move brush, click that, and we'll do the same thing here. Uh, maybe we will actually make this super dark red. Can we make this like this color? And then grab that red and make it darker. And maybe put some red on the underneath there. And on top over here and maybe we'll grab this color and do like a little bit like that Ooh, that looks so cool um, we got a couple more let me just hustle through these real quick we'll do like this maybe maybe this one should be blue maybe this one should be one of the weird blue ones just to get some variation in there uh, we can grab the dark color and kind of do some some dark there, maybe even darker, maybe extra dark is what that needs. I think, yeah, I think it needed some extra dark right there. There we go. There's a, a weird blue one. Uh, and then lastly, let's grab this one. We'll make this one orange um, and let's grab our dark color, kind of throw some of that in there and our light color maybe up here. I'm not really following any particular like path of lighting style, really. I'm really not um, for this. I'm just kind of having fun dropping stuff in here. Uh, but I think that looks cool. I think that looks neat. So now she's like in there and she's surrounded by all of this color. The last thing we can do on our background is maybe grab some black and throw some texture in so it's not flat back there. That could be cool. Um, so she's in there. We got all this crazy stuff in there. Um, I will actually group all this. I'm actually going to group it all uh, by selecting all those. Control G just to group it. Um, and then on the new layer, I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to go back to my hard round opacity. Um, and I'm going to grab this orange. Make sure that's as bright as it can get. Uh, and I'm going to come over here and, and we have some minutes left. Yeah, we got about five minutes left. Um, and what I want to do is turn my smoothing on and I want to add some illustrative pieces. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of add in some like drawn elements to it. Um, and I think that it would be really, really cool, um, if I had, um, let's give her some blushies, um, maybe longer. I think it would be really cool if I, uh, did the same thing with like this illustrative layer where I just put a clipping mask or lock the transparency and add some serious texture to these as well. 
think that would be cool. But we could do this. Um, I really did like adding the crown earlier. Um, so I think I could put a little put a little crown above her head because um, I kind of did that during the challenge for the character I was playing with. Do like a little illustrative crown, which I think looks neat. Um, I don't want to use the polygonal lasso tool. I want to use my regular lasso tool because um, I think the crown's kind of cute. Throw that up there. Um, oops. Deselect. Um, maybe it would be cool if I came through and did like some lines for hair that kind of extend in an interesting way just to kind of add some flavor to all this. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing around some ideas. It'd be cool if I did like a weird outline. I like this like idea that we could outline and put like some strange hash marks, um, hatch marks around um, maybe here, um, maybe around the side of her face. Looks kind of cool. Um, and we could come in and uh, kind of do the same thing to some of these lines. You know, that could be neat if we did some around our weird little spaghettis. You know, gotta, gotta sketch out the spaghettis, um, all that good stuff. And I think that looks kind of cool, you know? Like, I could continue to take this a little bit farther and just, like, really make something super, super neat out of it um, and just keep going with, like, all this craziness. Um, so I think I'm running out of time. I've got about two minutes left here, um, and I think I'll continue to add to this and, like, post it later because I really, I really enjoy this. I think this is so much fun. Um, so I'll definitely post this someplace, probably on Instagram um, later or in the Discord. Um, but I've had a lot of fun. I think this is super great. And the last thing I want to do is do a little bit of awards um, in our last couple of minutes here because we do have some overdue awards um, to award. Um, and if you scroll into the description below, I'm going to save real quick. Um, you will notice that there is something that you can download, which is an achievements page. And this is an achievements page I've been keeping track of. And on it, it says you deserve to earn points when you try things for the first time and or when you create something you are proud of. Get into the habit of appreciating the little things, moments in which you grow, not just complete. And I've been using this as a personal visual representation to keep track of all the cool stuff that I do, even when I don't finish a project. So I know I'm making progress in my art journey and not failing just because I couldn't create something perfect from start to finish that I can put in a case study or my portfolio. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, and I'm going to add a point into illustration because I did some pretty cool illustration today. I thought those lines that I added looked pretty nice. Um, I'm definitely adding a point for graphic design because I totally added some cool graphic design um, into my piece today. And I'm also going to add a point for presentation because I think that presentation was super cool. Um, I think I did a really great job and I'm going to save it. Um, and if you would like to use this for yourself or your personal projects or just for following along with me um, when I do this show, please feel free to download it so that you have a cool thing to keep track of your progress. Um, and that's all the time I have for you. I got to take off, but this has been an absolute blast. I got to go, but thank you all for joining me. Please stick around because we've got Alex Lazarus up next, I believe, doing some pretty cool stuff in Creative Cloud Express. Adios, everybody.